6 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. So glad to have you here with us on Up With Creme. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. Well, let's get right to our biggest story of the day because that winter-like weather that we have been talking about and talking about, guys, it is here. Jeremy yeah, Legu is. is at the Outdoor Weather Center breaking it all down for us. And luckily, well, Jeremy, it looks like you're struggling <laughs> a bit with that umbrella this morning. You okay? He's pulling one of those dramatic weather reporters out oh, of the yes. field. But it's not that <laughs> It's windy, not right, that Jeremy? bad. You tell it like it is. But uh, I've always wanted to be that guy. Oh, it's really coming down out here. We've got a little bit of wind and a little bit of rain early on this morning. Temperatures on the mild side here in town. But yes, the rain and wind are both present here across the inland northwest. A live look outside says that's nah, dark and it's wet and it's 39 degrees here for us in Spokane. So way too warm to get any sort of snow here but it is close. You head off to the north, you're going to find a bit of it. You head up in elevation, you'll find some as well. Coeur d'Alene keeps registering as snow on the radar, but in town it's melting a little too fast. So if you're on a hill outside of town, you might actually find a little bit of snow early on this morning. And that's the case if you head to the south or off to the north up in Spirit Lake. It's been coming down as snow on the radar all morning. Sandpoint on the warm side a little bit of rain for you. If you head up the mountain to Schweitzer, it's coming down as snow early on this morning. And as you see, Deer Park right on the edge, and it's kind of been that way. And the why we're seeing a little bit of what is registering as snow. So I would not be shocked if you saw a few of those snowflakes coming down early today. Now watch what happens as we put things in motion. You can see it stays off to the north and in high elevations, but really by mid morning, this thing starts winding down and by this afternoon, we wind up seeing a little bit of sun and some post frontal instability. Temps, well, excuse me, wind will continue to gust rather strong. We'll see wind gusts up near 30 miles per hour here around Spokane. We saw a bulk of that early this morning before the onset of the precipitation. And then later this afternoon, stays pretty gusty, but winds down quite a bit. Bulk of the wind stays down to our south today. And there you go. Temperatures mid to upper 30s for a lot of us this morning. And that comes with rain, clouds, and a bit of wind. And by this afternoon, we'll get rid of two of those. We'll get rid of a few of the clouds. We'll get rid of a lot of that rain. And we'll even see a little bit of sunshine as it remains a bit breezy and in the mid 40s later today. Well, this morning, the University High School student who allegedly threatened to kill another classmate knows the consequences. Yesterday, a judge set Adam McCarty's bond at $50,000 for felony threats to kill. That's according to court documents. Now, those documents also say that McCarty walked into class and yelled that he was going to kill another student. During the hearing, Commissioner John Stein said the situation is severe. I don't know anything about you. I don't know what you're capable of. All I know is that I've seen a lot of threats from students to other students, and this one is a lot more egregious than what I usually see, uh, given you apparently walked into class in front of the whole classroom of people and repeated the threat, so you find you are at risk to be out in the community. Now, in addition to the $50,000 bond, McCarty also cannot step foot on the University High School campus, and he must not contact people that he specifically threatened. That threat caused classes to be canceled last Friday. Another big story we're tracking newly released court documents give more insight into a local teen's alleged plans to bomb Medical Lake High School. Last week, a student alerted the school resource officer about a bomb threat after seeing it on social media. When the resource officer talked with the suspect, rather, he admitted to making pipe bombs. The court documents also reveal messages the 16-year-old suspect sent about his plans. One message says he would test the bomb out at school. According to investigators, the suspect said he had a bomb in his backpack on the way to school Thursday before for Halloween, and he claims he walked the access trail of Medical Lake and threw the bomb into the water to get rid of it. The suspect remains in the Spokane County Juvenile Detention Center as in detectives continue to investigate the bomb threat. We asked Medical Lake School District what communication they sent out to parents about the bomb threat, and we're still waiting for a response. It is time for your morning rush. More news and less time to get your day started. The Sandpoint Mayor Shelby Ronstadt is announcing that he is running for governor of Idaho. Never, Idaho needs leadership. That's why today I'm announcing my candidacy for governor for the great state of Idaho as a Democrat. 
Shelby is a fourth generation Idahoan. He's currently serving his second term as mayor of Sandpoint, and he's only the second two term mayor in the city's history. Former Idaho State Representative Aaron Von Ellinger pleaded not guilty to two felony counts of rape. He allegedly raped a 19-year-old State House intern back in March. The 39-year-old former Republican lawmaker who resigned from his seat during an ethics committee hearing in May was arrested in September. He is currently out of jail on his own recognizance. The trial is set to begin in April. Well, good news Seahawks fans, quarterback Russell Wilson is set to play in this Sunday's game against the Green Bay Packers. Now, Wilson re released this video showing his journey from surgery just a month ago, his rehab, and ultimately his return to the field. Head coach Pete Carroll says he wants to see how his quarterback makes it through the week. He's done a ton in the last week, and uh, so He's, he, he did fine today, he got off the practice field feeling great. So we just do it one day at a time, but um, he's not out here to do anything but play. You can actually watch the Seahawks play the Green Bay Packers this Sunday right here on Crim 2. Kickoff is at 1.25 p.m. Well, Russell is not the only one making a return to Seattle. Whale watchers spotted about 60 orcas on Monday between Whidbey Island and Kingston. This is both the J and L pods of the southern resident orcas. No sign of any new calves. Earlier though this year, three of the orcas in the J-Pod were pregnant. That's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag up with Krim on social media. Our Boomtown series continues on Up With Creme. This morning, we are talking about the podium. So the podium is Spokane's newest sports facility, and it features a 200-meter hydraulic indoor running track. And already two national championships are booked at the podium in the next year. Construction of the $53 million facility is now complete, and this morning we are getting a first glance inside the brand new world-class venue. So Nicole Hernandez is live there this morning, and she's speaking with the event manager for Spokane Public Facilities District. Good morning, Nicole. Can you show us around? Good morning, Channing Tim. So yeah, this place is absolutely gorgeous, brand new, like you guys mentioned. And I just want to give you our bearings a little bit as to where we're at. We're in the entrance now. We've moved away from the actual, you know, the track and the stands. But right behind these doors behind me is actually River uh, Front Park, that, that brand new Ice Age playground. So that's right where we're right in the middle of downtown, just at the heart of the city here with this brand new, beautiful building. I have Paul Christensen, Christensen here with me, and you're the know-it-all for the building Thanks. you know all the yeah. stuff so so we're we're at an entrance right now so what's here this is our main dining hall that we have we have two concession stands in the building and, and this is the main eating area and just just to our south here is, here is the uh the playground that you mentioned and uh Rearfront park put that in just over the last summer and it's just a huge addition for us um, for a lot of the little kids that are running around this building that their their brother or sister's playing in a volleyball tournament and it gives them something to do to get outside and 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 uh you know, just quit running around our building and <laughs> get out in the park and play. So tell me behind us, what, what's special about these up here? These are the, this is some of the artwork that we've put into this building. And uh, these are, this is done by a local artist and uh, we have lots of little names for them, but uh, really neat addition to the space. And at night, it's just a beautiful piece. Uh, I was eating dinner at uh, Anthony's the other day and you could see these lit up from a long ways away. So it's, it's really neat to see this from the park. How cool, especially because from this view, you can even see the pavilion as mm -hmm. well. So uh, this is one of two pieces and soon to be a third for our work here in the podium. Uh, and of course, I mean, if we want to walk this way a little bit out, you can kind of come through these tunnels entrances. There's five tunnels here to enter into the actual stadium part as well. So this is obviously number five. And as you continue going through, you get to the track, which is absolutely gorgeous. And we'll, we'll show you more about the track and, and the stands and, and everything that this, like you mentioned, world-class facility has to offer here coming up soon. So I'll send these back to you guys for now. All right, thanks, Nicole. Gosh, Such so a gorgeous beautiful. facility. It really is. I love seeing it on TV and I can't wait to check it out in person. Absolutely. Now, one of the biggest benefits of the podium is actually its location because the facility is in downtown Spokane. Yeah, so most venues like this are usually on the outskirt of a community, but with the podium, any tourists, visitors, athletes, coaches, they have the opportunity to do their race, go back to their hotel, walk through the park, get something to eat, 
walk around downtown or even warm up on the Centennial Trail, which is just outside of the doors. So what sets this facility apart? Well, organizers say this venue will bring major sporting events in Spokane, and they say the arena can host large spectator events and even cater to the specific needs of tournaments. It also has the space to host a number of courts or fields. However, city officials say the arena and convention center can still provide supportive space for the tournaments. Our Boomtown series continues all morning on Up With Creme. Coming up in our next half hour, Nicole Hernandez taking us all around the facility, plus telling us how future events could bring millions of dollars every year to Spokane.